guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Today we're going to talk about how I know what kind of fish and when to move them out for my outside summer tubbing series. Now today is the day. We are moving fish out and it's super exciting. This, this spring's weather has been kind of wonky. Uh, generally what I do is wait until the overnight temperatures are consistently above 50. And usually with this climate, the daytimes at that point are in the mid 70s to low 80s. However, this spring has been really unusual. We had an exceptionally hot snap where it was in the 90s and then it's been in the 60s during the day and the 50s overnight. And I've just been concerned that that's just a little bit too cold for the fish. But as a basic rule of thumb, in this area of the United States, which is Pennsylvania, by June you are safe to move fish out regardless. Normally I get to move them out in mid-May, not this year. So anyway, the things that I think about when I'm choosing fish are how do they breed, what is their natural range of temperature fluctuation in the wild, and that you can usually find by doing a pretty comprehensive search through species profiles, etc., or looking for collection data from that area, or by watching my species spotlights where I try and tell you. So I generally choose egg scatterers to move outside. Um, I find that with the vast amount of living foods in the bins, which I'll show you in a few minutes, I have very few problems with parents predating on the fry. And in my experience, rasboras and danios tend to really thrive outside, even with the daily shifts of temperature. Now, as you guys know, I never use heaters in my tubs and I don't always even aerate them. So this works out beautifully. I do think it's super important if you're going to breed fish outside that you put some time into letting the plants mature before you move the fish out. This aids with any nitrification issues, it provides more cover for the fry, and it allows all those little microorganisms and bugs to grow in the water so that your fish have an ample supply of live food. And I've found that generally within about a month of moving fish out, I already start to see fry in the bins. So let me show you the different fish that I've chosen and we'll talk a little more about that. You guys probably recognize these fish from my 150. These are my meteor minnows and you can see the females are noticeably rounder than the males that are very slender. The vast majority of these are my long fin version that I've been working with for about eight years now. I find that white clouds do exceptionally well outside and are always have the first to breed and provide a really large yield. I'll move out this eight or nine fish and probably bring in three or four hundred fry by the end of the season, even with cultivating fry throughout the season. You can see they're mature fish, ready to go and absolutely stunning. And wait till you see their colors outside. Sometime during this binning season, I'll pull all the fish so that you can see how their colors change from eating all the wild bugs as well as the green water. These are Microdevaria cubati or the neon green rasbora. I've done these a few times in the past with mixed results. Usually I at least quadruple the size of the school, but I'm hoping for better this year by giving them more space. You'll see that they'll turn a bright, bright green outside and they're absolutely stunning. And these are pretty mature, well-conditioned fish as well. Now there's not a really easy way to sex them, so we just have to guess. So I, put, I grabbed 10 of these guys instead of the normal smaller school. These are Danio Chopre or the Glow Light Danio, and I find them to be absolutely phenomenal fish. They're a bit larger than some of the other ones I work with, but their colors outside just intensify like crazy, and they keep that when you move them back inside, and they're just phenomenally beautiful fish. And as you can see with these guys, there's some that are noticeably slimmer than the others. Those are the males, and the females are extremely broad-bodied. These guys historically do super well outside. You guys probably recognize the little CPDs here. They're an extremely popular fish, and although they're not one of my favorite, you guys like them so much that I work with them outside every year. Now, in the aquarium, they tend to really predate on their fry, but I find that outside they don't at all. You can sex these. The males have much brighter colored fins, and they also have black sections in all their finish that the females don't. So it makes it really easy to sex them to move outside. I find that they do better with a few more females than males if for breeding conditions. These are those fish that were thought to be extinct, the Trigonostigma sumfongsi. 
and there are five females and four males in this container I believe and I'm simply moving them out because I feel like they're fish that really need to be worked with and I've had such good success in the past breeding fish outside I wanted to give these guys a try as well now I also plan to move out some of the Lacordae tetras which I'll show you here real quick these are the rainbow emperor tetra or nematobricon Lacordae and I'm going to move them out too, but later in the week it's going to be consistently into the high 70s overnight. So I'll wait until then just because they're a tetra. I don't often work with many tetras outside just because I find they're a bit more sensitive to the temperature fluctuations. So this will really be an experiment for me, but this is a gorgeous underrated fish. So I'm really looking forward to trying it. So let's go outside and we'll take a look at the bins. So the bins are doing really well and I should mention that I already did move out one species of fish a few days ago. And that was the lemon white cloud to nick these thacbiansis just to make sure that the temperature was stable enough but all of the bins plants have filled in really well and they're basically ready and i don't do any real acclimation again out here sometimes it's a bit brisk out today so i may let the dip and pours the little specimen containers float in the water and allow the fish to leave on their own but other than that i just dump them out here and wait all i've so all i've done is hook the dip and pours these little specimen containers with the fish in each of the bins so that the temperature can normalize a bit before they're released I'll leave them here for maybe half an hour or so and then just dump the fish in and wait so it's been about a half an hour and we're just gonna pour them into the bin These are the Kubatai. These are the long thin white clouds. I trip over my own feet. <laughs> These are the Trigonostigma Samphongsai. And I put them in this bin because it gets the most sun of all of them. I'm hoping that'll help with a higher yield of fry from green water. These are Danio Choprae, Glow Light Danio. And that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming updates or videos. Stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. So one of the reasons I start the plants weeks in advance is it allows the bins to mature. And you can see by the bucket handle on the inside, those are mosquito larvae, and the little specks all floating around everywhere are daphnia, which are exceptionally good foods for conditioning fish to breed. And it makes this whole bin experience super fun and easy, as I really literally just have to add fish and wait.